This one got a track out of Roots album. This was written by Andreas, lyrics by Andreas. This is called Dustin.
Dankjewel, Holland. Next song is our from our new album Roots. It's called Straight Hate.
what's up, Holland? I see a lot of fucking hardcore Sepultura fans that are ready to hear something old. Am I right? Under a pale gray sky, we shall all En terwijl de regen weer even onheilspellend neerdaalde op het publiek van Pinkpop... blijkt toch dat Sepultura ook de regengangers wel degelijk kan boeien. Op dit moment uh, heeft net iemand verteld... kijkt er op dat uh, Zuidpodium waar wij staan zo'n 25.000 mensen naar het optreden van Sepultura. Aan de andere kant, daar is het Noordpodium, daar kijken op dit moment zo'n 15.000 mensen. En ook in de tent wordt gedanst. En die tent is de afgelopen dag... Thank you. 
Thanks a lot, man. Peace. Thanks for all the bands, the musicians, and especially to all you, man. See you. Thank you. Andreas, hi, Andreas. Uh, on the left, I see Max, and here's Andreas. Uh, well, how did you do over here? It was great, great stuff, great crowd. Much better support than we have in Germany. Uh, we're very satisfied, man, very happy and tired. <laughs> now, I just told that this tribal aspect, uh, especially in the song Rata Mahata, you invited uh, the drummer of Doggy Dog. Yeah. Um, did the tribal aspect change your attitude towards your own music? I don't know, I think we're changing step by step throughout the years. Sepultura is a band who is together for more than 10 years and we've been playing every kind of place. So I think we just want to bring some new influence to our music and nothing more natural than the Brazilian music. We are from Brazil and we know how to play those instruments so we start working more on that. And the tribe for sure, you know, change a lot of the ideas that we have from the Indians, you know. A lot of people think they're stupid or something, they're fools. But they're very intelligent, they know what they want, you know, they live in freedom like they want, and they have the respect of the white culture in Brazil, which is very good, you know. So it was a great experience to record the whole Roots project, you know, we have a lot of guests, including the tribe and stuff, and now we are happy to be here to show our music live, you know, which is the best for us. I told you earlier that the percussionist Di Carlinhos Brown, who in the studio played in the studio, boeiende aspecten aan de muziek van Sepultura heeft toegevoegd. En ik vroeg aan Andreas, een van de leden van Sepultura, of dat hun eigen mening naar hun muziek ook veranderd heeft. Het was een boeiende ervaring om met die mensen te spelen, maar ze kenden natuurlijk dat tribal aspect kenden ze al lang. Want ze komen uit Brazilië en het vooroordeel dat veel mensen hebben over Indianen, dat ze dom zijn, dat geldt voor hun. Dat wil, daar willen zij absoluut niet van weten. Nou, um, this, um, this place, Pinkpop, is a festival where normally a lot of rock bands are. Do you feel at home in uh, well, a rock situation instead of a hard rock or heavy metal situation? I think we feel home whatever the people like our music, you know. I, I don't like to, to label the music and even the fans, you know. I think they're all there enjoying all the bands and if you don't like the back, just the band that play and go, just go in the back, drink some beer and stuff. That's what I like about festival, you know. Everybody respects each other's styles and everybody enjoy everything, you know. For us, the same to play with different bands, you know, like Rage Against the Machine and Therapy or Alanis Morissette, you know. So it's totally different and it's good for us to show our music for different people. A lot of people never heard about Sepultura here, so it's a good chance to show our music for them. Over duidelijk, uh, ik vroeg uh, aan Andreas of hij zich thuis voelt op de poster van Pinkpop, waar een heleboel rockbands staan, waar soms zelfs ook hele gevoelige klanken te horen zijn. Je gelooft niet, maar het is echt zo. En uh, toen zei hij, ja, wij voelen ons hier wel degelijk thuis, want we hoeven niet alleen gelabeld te worden als een heavy metal of hard rock band. Nou, Andreas, one more thing. Uh, over de past five, six, seven years, we had a boom on acoustic music. Is it imaginable that this band, your band, should do the things acoustically? Well, we've been doing that, like, with more the Brazilian, you know, music, the very traditional Brazilian music, like Caioas and Hata Mahata, or uh, the song we did with the tribe, it's sorry. And that's the way we like to use acoustic, you know, not in the melodic uh, or, you know, lovely way or whatever, you know. We like to use acoustic in a very heavy and dark moody. And we've been doing that. And for us, you know, never say never, you know. We can do whatever in the future and uh, whatever we like it, you know, so. I don't know, I see Sepultura doing a lot of different stuff in the future, for sure. Dus ook dat is de mogelijkheid voor Sepultura, dat ze dingen klein houden, maar dan meer bijvoorbeeld op het tribal aspect gaan zitten. En uh, ja, eigenlijk heel andere muziek gaan maken. Uh, my last question, Andreas. Uh, is this the kind of audience you, well, you want, or well, do you want more, a louder audience? Well, we always want more, but I'm pretty satisfied with the audience of today. It was really good. Oké, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Brom, waar zit jij?
to Phoenix. See, Phoenix is a very uh, fastly growing city right now. There's the stadium right there. That's where the Super Bowl was. That's the back of Sun Devil Stadium. People come from around the world. A lot of corporations are starting companies here because they can get cheap space. They can get uh, cheap workers, you know? And a lot of, I think, the musicians are coming here because they can get a recording studio for uh, anywhere from a half the price to a tenth the price of a regular recording studio, you know, in other states. Yeah, Arizona's pretty much known for the harder music, you know? All the music that comes out of Arizona that's pretty well known is like, other than Sepultura, Flotsam and Jetsam, Sacred Reich, uh, N17, Jason Newstead from Metallica, he used to play in Flotsam and Jetsam, a local pretty heavy band. So why do you think that is? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's an attraction here that people that like that kind of music like to come here. A lot of people say it's the heat. You know, when it gets to be 120 degrees in the summer, some people say, you know, that'll have a funny effect on you. It'd exactly. make you a little aggro. You know, a lot of reptiles live here. And I know for a fact, like, uh, Carrie King from Slayer, he lived here and used to raise snakes and all sorts of reptiles, lizards and such. I know a lot of people in the Sepultura crew, they have, uh, they raise reptiles. They have water dragons and stuff like that. Our manager, Max's wife, is from here. It was the first place in America that when we came here that we had like a circle of friends. So it was easier to adapt instead of just going to a city that we didn't know no one and stuff, so. We have an album where they have a cover of Orgasmatron from Motorhead, and the song got huge. They play on the radio every five minutes. Oh, yeah. So that's when Sepultura became real big in Brazil. That doesn't necessarily mean that people like us, you know? <laughs> but they know you're the guy. Like, you're the guy with the monster voice, right? I'm like, yeah, it's me. There's a lot of people that never thought we were going to be the one that we're going to, like, after all those years, be one of the few only Brazilian men to make out of Brazil that way. I mean, I think it surprised 90% of the Brazilian artists still does today. Talking to real big people still come to us sometimes and they don't understand. They go like who, like who? Like Caetano Veloso and Gilberto Gil. Oh really? Big people, yeah. yeah they, and they come go, to you and what, what do they say? How do you do it? <laughs> we we know how it is to be in a band from a third world country, try to break it out, and they know that, that feeling. And for them to see a band like us break it out, it's like it's important for Brazil. They're up here and they're in, in the desert and they're starting their new families and their new lives and they're, you know, they're, they're at a new level. Now they're looking back at their roots and where they're from and seeing what they're really about and, you know, where all this stuff comes from. You know, they're looking inside of themselves and at their history. <laughs> The whole thing about doing dictatorship was because we grow up hearing all the stories about people being disappeared and, and being exiled 
a lot of musicians and artists being tortured. A lot of our fathers, friends, yeah, you know. Really? We have friends that their fathers just disappeared, disappeared or some of them yeah. had to move out of the country because the stuff they were saying was against the, you know. There was this family crazy. from Chile moved to Brazil because Pinochet, because of the repression in Chile, they went to Brazil. You know, so all South America has always been really strong on the whole torture thing. And nobody would touch the subject. Nobody would even talk about it. And I was like, you know, I think this time for people like my age start asking the government some questions. You know, why did they do that? You know, what's the reason behind all this? Why did you kill and torture all those people, you know? I don't know, it's kind of like, I don't think it's never too late really to ask the question. Maybe nothing can be done about bringing the people back from the dead, but maybe we can teach our youngsters. Maybe I can teach my son how how it was bad how bad it was and maybe when he grow up or the people in Brazil that grow up right now that's three years old when they're 15 they don't have to deal with the same problem again. How old is your son? Three. Oh, three. Yeah. And I have another one that's nine months. I saw the guy what's his name? Uh, Dick Dale. Dick Dale. Yeah, yeah. I, saw I went to see him in Phoenix, and he has his five-year-old son with the drum kit. Uh -huh. through the whole show. Is it so? I thought that was great, yeah. I wish I could talk to him after the show, just to tell him how great I thought that was. It was yeah. better than any other show I've seen just because of that. I think that just gives a lot of freedom for people to think like musicians are just freaks and drug users and useless people, you know? That musicians are not, and artists are normal people that can raise a child just as good or better than than a politician or a doctor, you know? And you can take that kid on tour and stuff. So whose kid is that? That's Andreas. Andreas is a little girl. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's Julia. Let's move on. Ah, agora sim, sem bochechas, né? Olha lá, nena, soltou a chupeta. Eu vi a câmera. Dá um sorriso para os holandeses, tá? Que horas são? Os So where did you grow up? You, you probably never heard of it. Tell me anyway. Belo Horizonte. Where is that? It's between São Paulo and Rio. In Brazil. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's not in the coast. It's stores inside the country. Sepultura, we start doing our own music, but it sounded a lot like bands that we were listening at the time, like Motorhead, Venom. Basically, a lot of uh, bands outside Brazil. A few Brazilian bands that we were really into, but a lot of bands from outside. Some bands from Finland, especially like hardcore music, and some English bands like Discharge, and you know some of the metal stuff we were really into too. Yeah, not much of American influence. No? European. Why? Wow. Yeah. It's harder. It was all harder, heavier, darker, colder. I think bands like um, even the Beatles shock a lot of people. I, I heard stories of uh, people really freaked out when Elvis danced. When he did that, that dance, uh, my father Hebola. Twist, his hips. Twisted, yeah, yeah. moving twisted in, with his hips. Moving, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like people freaked out. Yeah. It was like, oh my god. <laughs> it's funny now. It's like you look at so pathetic, you know, like not, no, no matter. Today we're talking about way, way beyond that. <laughs>